Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Here we are once more, and today I'd like to speak about uh, how do we know other people. We, we have people that we meet that have a similar interest of ours, or uh, we're related to them, or we went to school, or some community gathering, something brought us together, and we begin to, as human beings, create an image of that person, uh, an idea of who they are and who they are to us. And often it can be a limited picture unless we see them in many different situations. And we, get, we can get a really pretty fixed idea of them. And what I'm beginning to learn in my late of life is that we are a multitude. We hold to others, we are many things. And people can become different in different situations. And the one you thought was like that in another situation is not like that. And how do we hold this uh, illusion uh, and this fixation? So one of our tasks as becoming conscious is to realize that who the person is is not often who we see. That really, truly underneath this person is that glimpse you had that you fell in love with, or the glimpse that you had that you admired, or the glimpse you had that you had respect for, and grow that picture of that person, even when their actions don't live up to who you know they truly are. It's easy, maybe it's hardest or easiest to do with those we love that are closest or the ones that we know the best. And we see them show up doing something so out of the blue or left field, as we say in the States. How can we become devoted, committed to remembering who they truly are. And also, in this time, we're getting to know ourselves pretty well. And this knowing of ourself and all the possible ways we can be underneath all of that, devoted to the one sitting here who is not my historic identity, who are not the actions I take when I'm in fear or pain struggling or surviving. I am the one that looks upon the one sitting here, who regards, who holds, who wishes the best, and who gives the benefit of the doubt for that action, and for that action, and for that action, and sort of like unconditional love. And how do we get to unconditional love? Practice, practice, practice. So let's practice together. Let's close your eyes maybe a little or just lower them a little so that you have just a little bit of light and begin that listening process of breathing, listening to whatever your breath is. See if you can do it without judgment. Because the listening itself is a portal to that one. One that knows that no matter how you're breathing, it's good. You're breathing. Feeling your, 
you seat, the support underneath you. We don't judge the support so much. We're just grateful there is support there. And we're breathing. Feel the body and its sorrows and joys. And we're glad we have a body. to enact our lives, to learn. The one, the overseer, the eternal, knows us, loves us unconditionally. It has discernment, but not judgment. It has hope and promise for us. Maybe they'll do a little better next time. We are so loved. In all our distressing disguises, even on some of your most negative days, when you're judging everything, yourself and others, or your most negative action, that thing you did or said. Look upon it with love. How can you help her? How can you help him? Do better next time. Because that's who they truly are. They are not maya, they are not the illusion of what we think we see or that we make into a fixed idea and then are so shocked that they did that. We are all capable of everything, everything. Let's be capable of the things we really want to be capable of. Listening. Entering into a place of unconditional love. Love for that thought, for the way you look in the morning in the mirror, for what you ate, what you said, what you did. Love for all of that. Love for the one who hates. for the fear, for the pain. The good grandmother love, the fairy godmother love, the eternal love. In times such as these, many of us are alone and many are surrounded by many and we're seeing things about ourselves 
and others was not what we thought. It was not part of our idea or our ideal. But we know who they are. We know who we are. Remember that. Fight for that. Be committed to that one. And you won't be led astray. Come back to that one. When that one is darkened, as it will be so many times, come back to the one. The one who has love in her cooking. The one who has love when they talk on the phone and talk to their friend. The one who works from home and is busy all the time. The one who forgets to water the lawn. All those remember who they truly are. That's our work. That's our struggle. That's our goal. Seeking to see the illusion. Seeking to see Maya. Practice listening in order to find that one. Practice listening.